Ronald the Barbarian is a Dutch CGI animated film that released in September 2011. It was produced by Einstein Film and had a total of three directors, whom I'm going to do my best to not botch their names. <clears throat> Kresten Vespierg Andersen, Torobion Christofferson, and Philip Einstein Lipsky. I can already hear the comments typing now. The title itself is a direct reference to the 1982 film Conan the Barbarian, but I must admit when I first heard the name of it, I just automatically thought of the old Saturday morning cartoon Dave the Barbarian, which is a show I really must get round to reviewing at some point. Twinkle, my flying steed! I'm sorry I haven't visited you for a while. I've been so lonely in here. Such terrible thoughts one has alone in the dark. Uh... Unlike Dave the Barbarian, which was primarily aimed at a younger audience, this film is definitely not a kid's film, despite how it may appear on surface level, and even how it's tagged as one on YouTube. Don't be fooled, this film has violence, gore, sexual moments, swearing, and of course, a lot of bull jokes. No seriously, there's even an entire segment of the film which quite literally features a floating bull sack. I can already imagine the amount of parents that would stumble across this film thinking it's a free and easy watch for little Timmy, and then popping back an hour later and seeing something like this. I'm about to lose control! <laughs> Take me! Take me hard! <laughs> Sadly for the film however, it turned out to be a box office bomb, releasing into Danish cinemas and only making around $2 million not even making a return on its $3 million budget. And those few that did see it didn't seem to rate it too highly either, with IMDB currently rating the film as 6.6 .6 out of 10, and a Rotten Tomatoes audience score of just 53%. Is the film deserving of this failure? Well, let's venture in and take a look. Here's a conversation topic for parties. Did you know that 2 out of 3 guys would experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? Oh, oh, my eye! And the problem is, once hair is gone, it's very difficult to get back, so that's why it's key to do something to prevent it from falling out in the first place. Keeps is a subscription service that provides advice and treatment on hair loss in men. With Keeps you will have a licensed doctor review your information and provide the best hair loss treatment plan for you. Your treatment is shipped directly to you every 3 months and there's 24 7 help and support should you have any questions along the way. But remember, the treatment typically takes between 4-6 to six months to take effect, so you want to act now before you notice the hair falling out. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com forward slash Steve Reviews, or click the link in the description to get 50% off your first order of hair loss treatment. That's keeps.com forward slash Steve Reviews. Thank you for listening guys, now back to the review. The film starts off by telling us the legendary tale of Kron, and how he originally freed humanity from their demon overlords. During this battle, Kron suffered a fatal wound and died 7 days later, and the people drank his blood in order to gain his powers. Which includes his dick apparently. I gotta say though, it's a pretty strong opening for the film. The animation is looking nice, the gore is looking… goresome, and I even like the visual of Kron dying in his victory pose. We cut to present day, which for us is technically the past, where we see the descendants of Kron's blood drinkers, the Barbarians, a powerful tribe of warrior people who pride themselves on getting drunk, crushing their enemies, and not being all too smart. We then get introduced to our main character, Ronald, who, yep, you've guessed it, isn't at all like the other Barbarians because he's weak, cynical, and doesn't enjoy fighting at all. Yeah, it's pretty much the opening premise of How to Train Your Dragon. Ronald doesn't have any parents as they are said to have died in the past, and so is raised by his uncle. I'll just shut up and train, idiot. One night the barbarians are all celebrating the anniversary death of Kron, and so a huge party is underway. Ronald is getting bullied by the other barbarians, so leaves the party and volunteers to take watch duty for the night. Of course, it would be this very night for the first time in years that the barbarians come under attack. And of course, Ronald wouldn't have the lung capacity to sound the warning alarm. 
During the attack, the barbarians are overrun and captured, except for Ronald, who by sheer luck manages to survive. Unfortunately, however, the same can't be said for his uncle, and in his dying breath, he tells Ronald that he needs to head out and find the Oracle, the Oracle? who will be able to give him information on how to save the other barbarians. Along his journey, he is joined by Alibert, who was one of the singers at the barbarian party. I'm not gonna lie, I think Alibert is one of the weaker elements in this film. His character is just loud and annoying. We're gonna rock! And all the army girls will say, Alibert, you're so sexy! The two come across the Oracle. Ah! Alright, that's it, I'm done shitting. Now get to wiping. Hmm. Go easy on my goddamn hemorrhoids! Who tells them about the warriors who took the barbarians? Turns out that they're led by a guy called Lord Volcasar, who seeks to become ruler of the land, and the only way to defeat Lord Volcasar is to find Kron's legendary sword. Along the way, they then meet Zandra, a strong female warrior who needs someone to defeat her in a duel so she can marry them. The problem is, she's always too strong for anyone that duels her, so she agrees to help rescue the barbarians in the hope that one of them will be able to defeat her. The trio enter a pub in order to find a guide who could lead them to Kron's sword. And is that guy caressing a goat? They meet an elf named Elric. The voice of the wind is a light in the evening sun. Who I honestly think is my favourite character in the film. He's just so animated and flamboyant, and there's just so much gay euphemism around him. Let me penetrate your aura. Why? Plus, I also think he gets the best one-liners. My elf soul senses that it is far, far. Isn't that it? Fairly close by. Destiny is on our side. Our heroes enter into the elf kingdom, where they need to get information from a book which can tell them where to find Kron's sword. The elves aren't too keen to let our heroes in, and so they need to figure out a way to sneak past the guards, in what is arguably the most ridiculous scene in the film where Ronald uses an invisibility potion on himself, but there isn't quite enough of it to cover his entire body. And what part of his body do you think he was unable to cover? That's right, his groin. <laughs> and so we then get an entire segment where Ronald is sneaking around the castle, and all we see is his bouncing bullsack. It is such a stupid, ridiculous moment, yet for some reason, I absolutely love it. It just feels so ludicrous and unnecessary, but it works. And I love to think of the animators that spent days, maybe even weeks, to perfect these bouncing nutsack physics. Oh and uh, throughout part of the scene, they also play the Nutcracker song. Perfection. Christ, look at this elf statue. There is really no subtlety in this film. Ronald manages to get the information from the book, and after a close shave, escapes the elf castle. The celebrations don't last long, however, as Volcasaur's men manage to track down Ronald. Ronald and Alibert manage to escape, but Sandra is captured. Before they can go out to rescue her, Ronald and Alibert get captured by a tribe of Amazon women. And I must admit, after spending much of the film looking at bull sacks and barbarian ass, this is a welcome change of scene. The tribe has no men amongst them, so want to use Ronald and Alibert to help populate the next generation. Yeah, it's basically like the Snoo Snoo episode from Futurama. You mean snoo snoo! However, unlike the Futurama episode, this one has a bit of a weirder vibe to it. Because whereas in the Futurama episode, Fry and Zap were up for the snoo snoo, Ronald here really isn't, but has to go along with it anyway, so effectively gets raped, and the film just plays it all up for laughs. Like, ha look, he was forced to have sex against his will. Meanwhile, back at Volcazar's lair, Zandra attempts to defeat Volcazar, but he ends up besting her which now in accordance to her tribe's tradition, means that she must now marry him and obeys every command. After escaping the Amazon tribe, Ronald eventually manages to find Kron's sword, but who else should also be there? But Sandra. Ronald is captured and taken to Lord Volcasar's lair, where Volcasar needs the blood of every descendant from Kron in order to become a demon god just like the one Kron originally defeated. 
Though technically he doesn't have the blood of every descendant, as Ronald's uncle died earlier on in the film, but whatever. Through dumb luck, Ronald manages to free the other barbarians, but unfortunately it's too late, as Volcasaur manages to drink the blood and transform into the demon. The sounds of terror will rise towards the sky! Christ, he looks just like the devil from Fantasia. Or not. They discover that the demon needs to be stabbed through the forehead, just as Kron originally did at the start of the film. Ronald initially attempts this, and fails. But with the combined effort of the other barbarians and Sandra, Ronald succeeds, to which... nothing happens? Interesting subversion of our expectations, I wonder where this is gonna go- oh wait, never mind. Ronald and Sandra declare their love for each other. We don't have to fight in a duel now, do we? No. You've already conquered my heart, Ronald. Where the barbarians return home and we get celebrations. Ali Burt impressing the ladies, more gay euphemisms, and one of the best closing lines to any film. Don't drink like a pussy! Fucking barbarians! And that's Ronald the Barbarian. A completely ludicrous film which isn't afraid to go balls to the wall. And I honestly enjoyed it a lot more than I was anticipating. It has a lot of low grade toilet humour and ball kicking jokes that I was honestly expecting to roll my eyes at. But I think because the film just fully embraces its insanity, you can't help but laugh along with it. The film's plot is designed to be a parody of the fantasy quest style genre, with its ridiculously stereotyped characters and exaggerated quest type plot where our characters are having to constantly sidestep the main mission in order to get new pieces of information. Before rescuing the barbarians, they have to go to a guy who tells them to get a guide, who tells them they need to get a book, which can tell them where to get the weapon in order to defeat Lords Volcasar and save the barbarians, etc, etc. Some people may be put off by this kind of plot, but I think Gurning knowing that the film is very self-aware of it, kind of makes it work. The animation is actually really nice not only offering a lot of fluid movement and expression, but also a large amount of visual gags going on too. Some just casually going on in the background that you almost need to double take in order to make sure you didn't miss them. The film was originally recorded in Danish, but the version I watched was the English dub, which I think has been voiced brilliantly. They sing songs at parties! Parties? That badass weapon is not a flame hurler, it's a fucking tuba man. And just like with the animation where there's a lot of background visual gags going on, with the voice acting there's also a lot of subtle voice lines thrown into the background that really adds to the comedy. Holy shit, my g-string hasn't been this high in years. Oh and the uh, Ronald the Barbarian theme that plays over the end credits is simply fantastic. With all that praise being said however, I can see where this film might have not scored so high, as although I did enjoy it, I was watching it free on YouTube, and I don't think the film is quite that high enough quality to justify paying a cinema ticket for. But as of now, the film is free to watch on YouTube, or Amazon Prime if you have that, so I do recommend you go check it out there. It's fun, frantic, and full of arse and balls. What more could you ask for? Hot balls, hot babes, hairy babes. Let me play you a ditty I wrote. Ahem. Toss a coin to your witcher, O Valley of Plenty. That's so fucking lame. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs>